Now at 6 and streaming on CrossroadsToday.com, attorneys challenging and defending a Biden administration immigration policy in federal court today in Victoria. Investigators looking into what caused the driver to crash in Riverside Park last night. And Goliad County officials tell what caused Goliad High School to be evacuated Wednesday. It took a tropical storm to end our 20 day streak plus of 100 degree, 100 degree weather, but it has returned. We're going to talk all about that and more. But first, here's Gino. And the end of the week had a great outing and is a part of the number one team in the state. We hear from her in sports. You're watching 25 News Now at 6. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Don Brubaker. Karina Garcia has the night off. Investigators looking into what caused a driver to crash in Riverside Park last night. Authorities say the driver was going too fast. A 16-year-old girl who was a passenger in the vehicle had minor injuries and was transported to a hospital. Authorities arrested the driver. 22-year-old Anthony Estrada Jr. faces charges of DWI. He was also taken to the hospital for injuries not related to the crash. And emergency workers were busy with this crash around noon today. A truck crashed into that culvert off airline near Navarro. Police say the driver had a medical episode and died at the scene. The man who died was 60-year-old William Coffey of Victoria. Attorneys challenging and defending a Biden administration immigration policy in federal court today in downtown Victoria. The policy allows migrants to temporarily live and work in the U.S. for up to two years. Under the policy, migrants must go through an online application process, have a financial sponsor, and undergo background and security checks. The state of Texas argues the parole program comes at a cost to county law enforcement agencies and to the taxpayer, while the defense argues these program enrollees are not part of the evidence presented by the state. In Afghanistan. So first, these programs are lawful. Second, the harm that Texas bases its case on is completely unsubstantiated. It's irrelevant to this case. It has nothing to do with people like Mr. Seip and the person that he has sought to sponsor. And third, this program confers immense and immeasurable benefits on communities all across the United States that people like Mr. Seip uh, embody. He lost uh, uh, his nephew. So every day they are anxious to receive and welcome their loved ones through this parole program, which is the only avenue they have to be able to be safe at least for a little while in the United States. Eric Seip, the defendant, intervener, and sponsor, gave testimony at the stand. The Washington native and his parents sponsored a Nicaraguan man to work on their family farm through the contested parole program. More information now on the evacuation of Goliad High School Wednesday. The Goliad Advance Guard reports the evacuation happened after receiving information from the Goliad County Sheriff's Office of a threat made to the school. Sheriff Roy Boyd determined the threat came from an Internet protocol address in China and determined the campus was safe after a thorough sweep. Hallisville Police Wednesday arrested 28-year-old Stefan Hill of Memphis as a suspect in a recent burglary. Hill was found to have almost 13 ounces of marijuana packaged for sale. Hill was taken into custody for possession of marijuana over 5 pounds. ERCOT issued a conservation appeal until 10 o'clock tonight due to extreme temperatures, continued near-record demand, and forecasted low wind power generation. ERCOT said that due to low wind power generation and high demand, Operating reserves are expected to be low for several hours this afternoon into the evening. The National Weather Service issues an excessive heat warning for one area county, Lavaca County, under an excessive heat warning until 9 o'clock tonight. The National Weather Service says heat index values up to 112 degrees are expected. And now let's take a first look at your forecast. In for first warned storm team, Chief Meteorologist Mac Pettis. Here's meteorologist Howie Gordon. Howie, you've got the 100s once again. Yeah, we had after a huge long streak, 20 plus days down. That tropical storm cooled us down a couple days ago. Yesterday, we got up to 99. We weren't able to get over the hump, but yes, right back in business today into triple digits with the heat indices even a little higher than that, 110 up in Quero. Hallettsville sitting right now at 109 degrees. We were a little breezy earlier. We were seeing 30 plus mile per hour winds gusting in Victoria. Now, 
And winds right around that 10 15 mile per hour mark will be in the 80s this evening overnight dropping down to 77 degrees. Now our heat is looking to continue to bump up, but we might see a shower or two coming up. We'll talk about that in my full weather coming up in just a little bit, Don. Howie, thank you. A Wharton teen accused of robbing a gas station at gunpoint now faces up to life in prison. The Wharton Journal Spectator reports the Wharton County Grand Jury handed out a single count aggravated robbery indictment against 18-year-old Jaliah Collette Hamilton of Wharton during August deliberations. A fentanyl dealer connected to a wave of teen overdoses in North Texas sentenced. 18-year-old Stephen Paul Brinson will spend more than eight years in prison. The sentencing comes after several teenagers in Carrollton recently died from fentanyl overdoses. Brinson admitted to selling fentanyl-laced pills to students at Flower Mound and Carrollton High Schools. At least five people have either been arrested or sentenced in connection with the deaths. House managers plan to call suspended Attorney General Ken Paxton to the witness stand during his upcoming impeachment trial. The Dallas Morning News reports Paxton tops the list of potential witnesses to be called by the managers. The Attorney General's lawyers have said Paxton will not testify. On the Attorney General's list of potential witnesses are his wife, Angela Paxton, a state senator. With the loss of city funding, four El Campo nonprofit agencies scrambling to make up the funding gap. The El Campo Leader News reports during budget talks, City Council voted 4-3 to three to eliminate all tax-supported funding for the El Campo Boys and Girls Club, After School Activities Program, El Campo Little League, and the El Campo Heritage Center. That revenue now goes to recommended staff pay hikes. Security responding to a suspicious package that forced the closure of one of the gates at Joint Base San Antonio Lackland. A base spokesperson said the package was found just after 8.30 Thursday morning. The decision was then made to close the gate. Explosive ordnance disposal personnel at the scene. Officials say a suspect is in custody and they are asking people to avoid the area. Fox News held the first Republican presidential debate Wednesday for the 2024 election in Milwaukee. The eight presidential candidates touched on a variety of topics from the economy, climate, uh, climate rather, abortion, crime and foreign policy. Meanwhile, former President Donald Trump sat down for an interview with former Fox News host Tucker Carlson, which was released on X, formerly known as Twitter. The candidates will face off in another debate again next month in California. Here's your viewer poll this evening. Scan that QR code on your screen to vote now. Question is, who do you think won the 2024 Republican primary debate? Former President Mike Pence, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, South Carolina Senator Tim Scott, former Governor Chris Christie, former Governor Nikki Haley, former Governor Asia Hutchinson, tech entrepreneur Vivek Ramaswamy, or Governor Doug Burgum? or you didn't watch. All right, of the top candidates, the person who had the most votes was Nikki Haley, 24%, but the choice that got the most votes, 46%, didn't watch. All right, we thank you for voting. We want to hear from you. Come to crossroadstoday.com slash vote to take part. We'll have an update on what you and your neighbors are saying on 25 News Now at 10. A South Texas school district closing temporarily after a surge of COVID-19 cases among students and staff members. Rungi ISD Superintendent Hector Dominguez Jr. announced in a letter that schools will be closed until next Tuesday. As of Monday, the district had 10 active cases. Also, all extracurricular activities and practices canceled out of precaution. AAA reports the average price in the U.S. for a gallon of gas fell four cents last week to $3.83. That came despite growing demand, which usually increases prices. The overall price of oil has fallen, and that influences prices at the pump. AAA Texas reports the average gas price per gallon in Victoria, $3.35. That is down $0.08 cents from a week ago, but up $0.24 cents from last month. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Crossroads Today. Hit the like button and click the notification bell. Then you can see Crossroads Today on YouTube. And stay with us coming up on 25 News Now at 6. A migrant shelter run by volunteers in Chicago is closing. Also ahead, whoever let this dog out in the heat is in trouble with the law.
shelter from migrants in Chicago forced to close down, leaving dozens scrambling to find new homes. This all volunteer run shelter in Pilsen that has opened its doors to newly arrived migrants for nearly four months. We've had maybe 260 people come through the shelters. We'll now have to shut them for good. And part of that is around our volunteer capacity. Part of that is around our ability to fundraise. The center was created by a volunteer network called Todo Para Todos. Anna De Stefano is part of it. Insurance issues with the property, lack of funding and staff, many of whom are educators and had to go back to the classrooms, all contributed to its closing. I think we always knew that there would be a temporary aspect to this. We definitely had hoped to be able to host people longer. The goal is to get the 85 residents still here moved out by September 3rd, ideally to permanent housing but it's been a challenge. There's a lot of uncertainty. I mean, every time we've been asking for support and resources, we're kind of told that there's no more capacity, so I'm not really sure what that's going to look like at the level of the city or the state. We've also reached out to the city and are waiting to hear back. Staff members like Cirila Espinosa fear some of the residents here along with their small children. Es triste porque los niños se deprimen. We'll have to go back to sleeping at the local police station while they figure out where to go. But volunteers are staying hopeful. The people are really still committed to helping. And so are the residents. Yeah. Resident Emma says she still doesn't know where she will move to, but says she's thankful she's been able to call this place home, even if for a bit. Especially after her months-long journey to get here from Ecuador. Gracias, Chicago. A new study shows recent wildfires caused asthma-related ER visits to jump 17% in the USA. The CDC reports looks at days from April through August when Canadian smoke plagued Americans the most. The researchers say the jump is compared to normal expectations for the time period. Authorities in Houston are trying to figure out who left a dog outside on a balcony in a Houston apartment. The dog is still okay but they want to face charges. That dog narrowly made it. He's recovering here at the SPCA tonight. Investigators tell us that dog's owner was out of town when he left the dog on the balcony without any water. Yeah, it was past cutting it close. I mean, it was literally, you know, they were on the other side and came back. So. Chief Animal Cruelty Investigator Jay Chase says the dog had been on that balcony for several hours. Neighbors called for help. The dog was unresponsive. When they actually got onto the patio, it appeared that the dog had expired, but as they were investigating, the dog actually lifted its head and gasped, and they realized it was still alive. The Ponderosa Fire Department, along with Precinct 1 constables and the SPCA, worked together to get to the second floor and get the dog down. They rushed him to an ER clinic. The dog is already improving and is on its way to health. Okay, Bubba? With extreme heat set to continue this week, the SPCA expects their call load to continue spiking, and it's already stretching their staff thin. There's so many of these calls, and they are so exigent that regardless of where in the city we are, we drop what we're doing and go to these. Animal cruelty charges against the owner are possible. 100 degree weather streak was kicked to the side, but we're starting a new one. We'll talk about it straight ahead.
All right, I guess we're going to start off with our weather poll. Let me see the numbers. Are we pulling that up? So where do you think the next tropical system will strike? So Northeast Coast, no one thinks so. Dixie Alley, 15% uh, thinks so. Florida, 70% chance. Our next storm is going your way. And then Texas, just 15% chance. Hey, I guess we're good there. Georgia, looking pretty good. A uh, little bit inland and good part, part of the state, but they are a coastal place. Hey, but no one's, no one's picking it to come your way, Georgia. All right, let's get into things here. So slight PM rain chances. Uh, I'm going to hold those to the coast, or not even the coast, but the open water. So staying dry on land. High heat indices, and I mentioned it before, August 20th, 20 straight days of 100 plus. Tropical storm came in there, knocked us down with rain and cloud cover. But here we go. Back into the 100s again. Maybe we're starting another long, long streak. 103 degrees today, just shy of a record set back in 1924 at 104 degrees. All right, winds. We were gusting away a little bit ago. Winds in that 30 mile per hour range overall on the lighter side, maybe on the coast in that 15 mile per hour range. So winds uh, start tending to relax at the moment. What's not relaxing are our temperatures back into the 100s. Again, excessive heat watches and warnings. Then you got the uh, outside of the viewing area for the most part, then the heat advisories in the orange, the excessive heat warnings in the red and the purplish color. That's away from us for the most part. Um, look, part of the viewing area, not even under a warning or an advisory. I think that will change though. Temperatures are going to be on the rise. Look at our dew points. So yeah, a little bit on that drier side on the coast though. Look at this dew point temperature of 86 degrees. Is that stuffy? Yes, very much so. Just 105 over there in the Port O'Connor area. You get up there to the west, northwest portion of the viewing area, Hallettsville, Gonzales, 109 degrees. Quero sitting at 110 for that real feel. Look ahead. These aren't looking too, um, too fierce. Uh, we've had a lot worse, but I think some of these numbers could go up. I think we could get some moisture later on in the week. Maybe those will start to shoot up once again. High pressure for the most part influencing our atmosphere. Could see some moisture though moving up from the south. Again, most of this I think will happen over the open waters and away from the coast just by a little bit. So yeah, probably staying on the drier side once again with most of the activity. Again, staying out there over the Gulf and the open waters. All right, here's our marine forecast. 91 for our water temperature. Seas just two feet. That'll keep our bays on the smooth side. All right, we have a little feature out there in Central America that could head up to Florida and then look at all these different uh, diagrams and models where it could go, but it looks to strike Florida. So you might be right with that 70% chance hitting Florida. Now here we go with Franklin. Unless you're in Bermuda, you're on the safe side. Look at that category two. We've got some more features out there in the open ocean. Those are in their primitive stages. So I'll continue to let you know what's going on. Overnight, we'll be down to 77 degrees, and then for tomorrow, right back up to 101 degrees. Mostly sunny, you got a 20% chance of showers, maybe some late night, early morning fog with some low-level moisture getting trapped in the atmosphere. And then for the rest of the week, here is what we got. Yeah, 20s and 30s and 40s, that's some of our highest numbers in a long time besides the, sub the tropical storm. Other than that, look at this, triple-digit weather, heat indices again pushing 110 plus. For more weather, news, and sports, we've got our app. That's at CrossroadsToday.com. That is free with any Android and iPhone. And now we send it back to Don. All right, Howie, thank you. Sports Director Gino Perez is here. Gino, can you believe it? High school football is almost back. Yeah, I mean, where's my watch? Because I can't <laughs> believe the time has passed. And it's about to be crazy tomorrow with CFL starting. But we got two Tigers battling it out on the field. We'll have more on that after the break.
At a crossroads, our athlete of the week is a familiar face out of Goliad. Sports reporter Zach Brown has the latest. Goliad star senior Kyla Hill has been a big part of their athletic program since her freshman year. Over the years, she has made it to state and won gold in the hurdles, and now she is a leader on the number one team in Class 3A. We haven't been first in a while, so I feel like there's maybe like a little bit of pressure, but not too much. Obviously, it's my senior year, so I definitely want to make it as far as possible, make it back to that state championship. Since the 2015-2016 school year, Goliad Volleyball has gone undefeated in district every year. Kyla Hill says the girls handle the expectations very well to help her set up for her 17 kills against Yoakum. They now have a new freshman setter in Isabel Sanchez, who she says the team has great chemistry with. With it being her senior year, she doesn't want to be the ones that break that winning streak as she hopes to make another push for a state championship out on the volleyball court. 17 kills and being a huge part of Goliad Athletics is why Kyla Hill is your Athlete of the Week. And speaking of Goliad, T-minus one day until the start of the 2023 football season and two big cats are battling it out tomorrow in South Texas. Goliad had its first 10 win season in four years last year and looking to build off that this year. Head coach Kevin Salazar is back at the helm and knows, knows the season opener against the number four ranked Tidehaven Tigers is going to be a tough one. Salazar said the team lost four offensive linemen, but they are already meshing together. You know, the big thing, we just want to focus on ourselves getting better every day and every week. Uh, you know, we don't really worry about rankings and numbers. Uh, our deal is just to progress on a weekly basis and, and uh, take it one week at a time, get a little bit better every week. The Tigers have a new man under center, and his name is Colby Rinquist. The senior earned the starting job after a grueling offseason, and the quarterback said the defense is the identity of the team, but the offense is nothing to scoff at. Yeah, it means a lot. First day of practice. We had three quarterbacks. They're out here fighting for a spot. And I mean, we all worked hard, and I just came out on top. I mean, I really appreciate it. Like, the other, the other quarterbacks pushing me. It just makes me better, and I'm glad I got the spot. The Goliad and Tidehaven Tigers meet in El Maton for the first time of the season. This kickoff is at 7.30, and 25 News Now reporter Darius McCormick will be there with highlights for tomorrow's CFL show. The Edna Cowboys come into tomorrow's game against the East Bernard Brahmas as the favorite. Edna head coach Jimmy Mitchell said the deep run into the state semifinals last year made the team a whole lot closer, and he is looking to win the whole thing for the first time in its history. You know, keeping them grounded, focusing on working hard every day, concentrating on the day and not looking ahead and all that stuff. So, uh, that's a big focus of ours and of course working hard and these guys are working extremely hard so I couldn't be prouder of them for that, you know. The Cowboys will look to rope in the Brahmas and start its state title aspirations with a win. Kickoff is at 7.30 in Edna. And don't forget we have the CFL show tomorrow night after the 10 o'clock show right here on ABC. Don, that's your sports. Back to you. All right, Gino, thank you. We're back in a moment. Hey, if you can't wait for the State Fair of Texas to open, head to Minnesota. Their State Fair is open.
Tonight, the Minnesota State Fair up and running again for a 12 day party. Organizers swear will be the best one yet. This first fair goers were a Minnesota family who camped out for more than 16 hours. Attendance and spending at the State Fair rebounded last year, but still did not quite reach pre pandemic levels. You know, if they had the State Fair of Texas right now. I don't know if anyone would go because it's so hot outside. Yeah. Too hot for it, maybe, but. Minnesota with a Minnesota. For vodka soda be a lot easier up there because it's yeah. a little cooler. But well, yeah. that's yeah, that's what uh, I understand. We did get some relief with that tropical storm coming through. Yes. Knocked us out of the 100s for the first time in the month of August. Mm -hmm. And yesterday we tried to get there, stuck at 99, but today right back through the gates into the 100s. Here's our real feel where a little bit ago we were 110 plus in some locations. And then looking ahead overnight, 77 tomorrow, right back up to 101. And looking ahead, yes. More triple digit weather, so not fear like weather, Don. <laughs> All right, Howie, thank you, and thanks for joining us. We'll see you tonight for 25 News Now at 10. Have a good one, everybody.